Hi, this is Alex Avery with the Hudson Institute's Center for Global Food Issues. I'm the Director of Research and Education here and have been such for 15 years. My background is in plant physiology and plant science. And for the last 10 years, I've been watching very closely the research and the activism of Dr. Tyrone Hayes from the University of California, Berkeley. And for 10 years, Dr. Hayes has tried to claim that atrazine is an imminent threat to amphibian populations because it feminizes frogs at some but not all concentrations, apparently, according to his research, uh, and means that there are more females than, than fewer males in the wild. And this is a critical threat to amphibian populations, according to Dr. Hayes. Um, the problem is, is that while Dr. Hayes, whose latest research paper is based on a whopping 80 frogs, only 40 of which were treated with atrazine, uh, is up against a large body of research showing that atrazine has no impact on amphibian development, including uh, several recent papers, one by Oka, another by Kloas, and uh, the Kloas paper looked at uh, more than 3,200 animals uh, and over 100,000 micrographs at multiple atrazine concentrations, and they found no impact on feminization of males or, or sexual development. And they did all of this with the ever watchful eye of the EPA looking over their shoulder to ensure their experimental design and their protocol was, uh, would make the research worthy for submission for regulatory approval. Uh, and after all of that, they found nothing. So we have an activist researcher who prefers to send out his findings via a press release orchestrated by environmental organizations and makes wild, unsubstantiated claims about atrazine's risk to human health via breast cancer, et cetera, et cetera, or researchers, independent researchers who don't work for chemical companies and who want their research to be taken seriously, who dot all the I's and cross all the T's and show no impact on amphibians. So we have to weigh one or the other. And I don't think Dr. Hayes has uh, really stepped up to the plate. He continues to uh, do research that, according to the EPA, uh, is uh, insufficient uh, and scientifically flawed. The former deputy director of EPA's Office of Pesticides, uh, Dr. Ann Lindsay, testified that Dr. Hayes' data are insufficient, quote unquote, and they found uh, uh, that the, the uh, other papers he cites are scientifically flawed. And they also complained, going back to the EPA and data submission, uh, said that Dr. Hayes would not share his raw data. Quote, EPA has never seen either the results from any independent investigator pub published in peer-reviewed scientific journals or the raw data from Dr. Hayes' additional experiments that confirm Dr. Hayes' conclusions. So we have all of that. We have reason to trust the one set of data. We have reasons to doubt other data. And my last question to Dr. Hayes is, if atrazine is really the menace that you claim it is, A, why are th the frog populations th still thriving all throughout the Midwest, even though we've been using atrazine for 50 years? Where is the frog Mageddon you warn about? And two, why is it that Yale University researchers, uh, are, led by Dr. David Skelly, are finding more feminized frogs in urban areas than in rural areas? And they suspect that atrazine isn't the culprit, but in fact, human hormones uh, in the wastewater uh, stream are the culprit. So if atrazine is really this menace, A, how come frogs are still thriving 50 years later in atrazine using areas that have been using atrazine for 50 years? And B, why are the urban areas having a worse problem than the areas, farming areas where atrazine is most used? Two challenging questions for Dr. Hayes and for those trying to sort out fact from fiction, reality from fantasy. We'll continue to watch this debate. We hope it plays out vigorously in the scientific literature and eventually we'll come to some sort of reasonable conclusion. Uh, I've come to that conclusion, but others need more time and we'll see how it goes. Signing off from the Hudson Institute, this is Alex Avery.